This is Mike Sokol from RV Electricity, and welcome to my new podcast series on the latest technologies for your RV. Today, I have Eric Fulmer from XL on the line. XL is the company performing the plug-in hybrid upfit on the new Ford F-150 pickup trucks. So is a hybrid or all-electric RV going to be available anytime soon? Let's talk to Eric and find out. Eric, welcome to RV Electricity Podcast. Thanks so much for taking the time to discuss this timely topic. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. So please tell us a little bit about the plug-in hybrid Ford F-150. I understand this is an aftermarket conversion built by your own company, XL. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So we make an aftermarket uh, plug-in technology that turns standard Ford F-150 pickup trucks into plug-in hybrid electric versions of those vehicles. So it's primarily designed for uh, municipal and utility fleets as well as commercial applications, but um, essentially for commercial and municipal fleet applications that want to reduce uh, their or increase their fuel economy and reduce their emissions. So it's a great way to get additional uh, miles per gallon and to reduce the carbon emissions that those vehicles are, uh, are producing. So with our, with our upfit on a standard Ford F-150, we can see uh, an increase in MPG uh, of up to 50% and a reduction in CO2 emissions uh, by a third, about 33%. Excellent. So, so to, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's just a, a great way to, to save money and increase your sustainability if you're a, uh, a commercial or, or a municipal fleet manager. Good. So what exactly is a plug-in hybrid vehicle compared to a regular hybrid or an all-electric vehicle? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a lot of definitions depending on the type of propulsion that a vehicle uh, will run by. And I'll, I'll tell you what our definition is. There are some uh, um, consumer vehicles, for example, that may look at this a little bit differently where a plug-in hybrid might run for a short period of time on an all-electric propulsion and then switch over to gas when, um, when it runs out of electricity. We take a little bit of a different approach. We never actually take over the entire propulsion of the vehicle, so we provide an electric assist when the vehicle is accelerating, and then we use regenerative braking to capture energy when the, when the vehicle is slowing down or when the vehicle engages its brake. And the rationale for that is it's those periods of time where the vehicle uh, is running at its least efficient operation. So we are providing um, the benefits of an electric assist where we're helping to, to push the vehicle along um, as it's, you know, as it's uh, accelerating and then we store that energy as it's decelerating. Uh, so we never actually take over the full propulsion of the vehicle. Uh, we just simply provide an assist, which which gives us those uh, MPG improvements and those those CO2 reduction emission improvements. So interestingly, if it will pro provide regenerative braking, I'm assuming this will almost act a little bit like an exhaust brake on a vehicle if you're coming down a hill, correct? Yes, it's sort of to in terms of the 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 experience that the driver feels, they really don't even know what's happening. The best. The best way to describe it is that it sort of feels a little bit like uh, shifting the, the vehicle into a lower gear. Um, and so the, there's a residual effect where the, 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 um, the brake maintenance and the brake pads are not stressed quite as much either. It, it actually helps to extend the life of, of the, the braking system as well. And the, uh, there are some residual service benefits along with that. but. Um, you know, we're, we're storing energy throughout that time, which is nice. So the driver doesn't even really have to do anything differently or, or drive differently or uh, operate the vehicle any differently than they would a standard gas-powered uh, you know, gas powered engine version of that vehicle. So to them, it's seamless. And at the same time, they're, you know, they're increasing their MPG, uh, they're increasing their fuel economy and reducing their their overall emissions. So it's, it's very seamless from the driver's perspective. Now, we already talked a little bit about does this technology improve the gas mileage over a regular gasoline power truck and by how much, but does it increase the towing capacity compared to an all gasoline version of your truck? 
So interestingly enough, it doesn't actually impact the towing capacity at all. So whatever types of towing capacity you have on whatever vehicle that it is installed on, um, it's going to be the same. So it's not going to negatively impact it and not necessarily going to positively impact it as well. We do provide an additional 220 foot-pounds of additional torque into the acceleration process, but the primary purpose for that is to really um, boost the acceleration or assist with the acceleration without having to run the engine as, as, uh, as hard. So it's not necessarily designed to increase the towing capacity of the vehicle, although we are providing that additional boost uh, at, during the acceleration process. So, uh, so that's primarily what it's designed for, but it does not negatively impact the towing in any way, which is nice. That can sometimes be the case for an all-electric or alternative fuel vehicle might uh, impact some of the towing capacity of some of those vehicles, and, and that's not the case for ours. So it looks like you're aiming at the delivery fleet market for now, but do you foresee a day when a plug-in hybrid or all-electric vehicle could be used to tow an RV trailer? Yes, uh, we actually could do that today. So, you know, uh, to my point about uh, not impacting the, uh, the the vehicle towing capacity at all, if you, if you have a vehicle that can tow an RV trailer today, um, and it is upfit with our system, then you're still going to be able to to tow that that trailer, um, you know, post installation. So, um, but you're absolutely right. It is it is designed. Our systems are primarily designed for the commercial and municipal fleet market. So so not just uh, package delivery and last mile delivery, although that certainly is a, a, a huge application for us. Um, we're also in all sorts of different uh, commercial uh, utility vehicles, um, uh, you know, working for uh, electric utilities, for gas utilities, uh, really anything that, any sort of a, of a class two through six truck uh, with a variety of uh, accessories on it, a variety of applications, it really is a broad scope for what we are, are designed to, to support. Very good. So. What do you see as the largest challenge to building an all-electric RV motorhome, even a small one like a Class B Sprinter van? All electric, not hybrid. Yeah, the two the two primary uh, impediments to that um, are really kind of uh, across the board for all different types of, of EVs, but specifically for the RV market, the, the two challenges that you're going to come up against are, are really battery uh, battery cost, you know, the, the, the size and the expense of a battery uh, that has enough power to, to operate an RV over an extended period of time will be pretty significant. Um, and then the second challenge, uh, which is equally daunting, is, is the, the current level of infrastructure, charging infrastructure within the United States would be difficult to support an all EV uh, version of a, of a of a recreational vehicle, largely because those vehicles are are often traveling, you know, by their nature, they're traveling to, you know, remote uh, areas in a lot of cases, or they're traveling long distances. So having the infrastructure in place to ensure that there's a place to charge them regularly and make sure that they are, um, you know, at full capacity or enough capacity to get you to point A to point B, um, is a challenge for that for that industry as well. So. That's a big part of why we focus specifically on, on the plug-in hybrids and the hybrid electric vehicles. And you're right. It's with every vehicle out there. Everyone keeps asking me, when am I going to have my all-electric truck? And, you know, by the way, when am I going to have my flying car? And, <laughs> and I keep saying, it's, it's coming quicker than you think, but um, don't get out your checkbook just yet. Right. The good news is we are absolutely headed in that direction. So there are there are definitely measures being taken at the... Uh, the federal and certainly the state level uh, right now that are helping to to drive infrastructure improvements and advancements um, to support an all EV, all EV uh, fleet, um, but those are you know you're, you're still talking about decades away before we are there as a as a nation to to have full coverage across the country uh, to where we'd be able to reliably support you know an all EV type of a fleet situation, but we are absolutely getting there and, and everyone in the clean tech space and certainly in the EV space um, 
is uh, is rooting for that, and and uh, it is definitely happening. It's just it's going to be a, a process that happens over time. So where can I see one of these hybrid trucks, and when can I buy one? Well, you can buy them today, and you can see them um, at your at your Ford dealer. Um, if you are a commercial fleet, um, you have uh, access to uh, a Ford commercial dealer, and that's primarily where those vehicles are sold through. You can also contact uh, XL at xlfleet.com, and we can help steer you in the right direction um, to where you could buy them in your area. But um, they are they are uh, installed at professional installation locations throughout the country. But we work very closely with Ford, where we were the first. EQVM certified uh, electrification partner for Ford. So we work very closely with them on the development of our products, the um, the installation of our products is, is all um, is all uh, approved and understood by Ford and it does not affect the OEM Ford warranty uh, at all. So that's an important point to make too is when you're thinking about your service, uh, your ability to service these vehicles, uh, we are not disrupting the, the the service schedule, the maintenance schedule, or anything having to do with the warranty of the Ford vehicle because our system goes in post transmission. So there's nothing that we disrupt um, from the engine, the transmission, the drivetrain. We are you know we are all post transmission, and, and it really helps to, uh, to to be a more parallel system with what Ford has already developed. Um, and so I'm curious, is there anything that you have to do to the tuning on the engine control module to take advantage of this extra boost? I'm guessing a little tweak here and there maybe? No, we actually have a, we have a, control, um, uh, a control unit that is part of our system that, that handles all of the, uh, the decisions, if you will, for you know, when it's storing energy and when it's transferring energy. So there's a motor drive that sits uh, under the uh, under the chassis of the vehicle, which controls all of that, so it's not taking over or disrupting anything that the uh, that the factory Ford vehicle is doing uh, on its own. So so we kind of take over the um, what our system does, but we're not controlling anything about what the the Ford vehicle is is doing. And that's part of what I mean when I say it's a it's a parallel parallel system to what Ford has has engineered. Okay, so anything else you can tell our listeners about the future of electric vehicle technology? I would say, you know, they, it is advancing all the time, um, and it's a, an, ex, an exciting time to be a part of this industry because we really are headed towards uh, an all-EV uh, type of environment over time, and, and our technologies really provide uh, the bridge for... Um, for companies and municipalities who are looking to electrify their fleet today, but are are you know have been withheld from some of the limitations on cost or charging infrastructure um, that that have, have prevented them from electrifying their fleet in the past. You know our vehicles are providing a bridge to uh, get some of those EV benefits today without having to go all EV yet. And and uh, uh, you know and move their fleet forward uh, and and uh, provide uh, sustainable value to their fleet without having to worry about you know completely changing their operations or their driver behavior. So Eric, thanks so much for your time. This has been great. We've all learned a lot. But now I want a plug-in hybrid vehicle. I really do. If I could talk Ford out of one of these F-150 plug-in hybrids, I'll drive it around the country to all my RV electricity seminars in 2019. We can only hope. This has been Mike Sokol for RVElectricity.com. Thanks for watching and listening.